Little Earth Farm Knitting and More podcast. Today is March 6th and I have to admit it is getting a little repetitive as I look out the window and everything is still very white. I think we still have at least between two and three feet on the ground um, and today it's very cold, about 15 degrees, but it is very sunny as you can see you know, in this room. It's bright sunshine, thing, which is such a gift blue sky, still able to do my walking, and the sun does feel good, but it's really cold still. We know that that will, I know that that will change quickly, but we still have to get through this, um, these, these days, and I hate thinking like that, like get through. Each day is special, each day is a gift, but it still can be, it's, I've had a few harder days than normal recently because I think it is just because of the repetitiveness and um, the sameness, the same routine each day. Um, so welcome, welcome to all of you. We recently moved back to Vermont um, the end of July. We live in East Central Vermont in a little town, a little rural town, but we live on a main, on a state road. Uh, we bought this house so that we can start our next our, it's actually been our dream for a long time of farming and having a farm store so that we can be more involved in our community. And speaking of community, we moved to the right town. We didn't uh, do any research. We found this property and we knew that this was for us right away, but it turns out that we moved into a little town with an amazing community of people that are supportive, welcoming, and really interesting. Yesterday it was town meeting. That was fun to meet more people, put more names to faces, and they had soup and afterwards we're getting involved with their um, organization within the town, but it's separate from the town. Um, it's an organization that supports the townspeople through different ways. One of their big um, areas is the children of the town. They ha Each year they have a free week-long camp, day camp, Monday through Friday, 100% free to everybody. They utilize people within the town that have a certain expertise or knowledge to help with different um, classes within the camp. And um, it's really neat. It just so happens that the Monday after we had moved here, Mike was going to the town clerk's office, which was across the street from where the camp was being held. And he had Emily with him and they went over and found out about the camp and she wanted to go. So the next day she went. So she was quickly immersed into um, the new town and she enjoyed herself a lot. We're looking forward to getting involved with helping out with that this summer. And they hold various little festivals throughout the year. Uh, Mike and I are specifically getting involved in their sustain sustainability um, committee to kind of look at how the town can be um, support one another, really. Isaac, do you need to come out? Yeah. It's fine. Whenever you do, I can stop it. So. I have done quite a bit of knitting. I've done quite a bit of ripping out though as well. So I will share those things with you. Um, one of the first things I want to share, it was supposed to be my handmade um, holiday knit 11, where I'm going to complete one item for a Christmas gift by the first of each month. Um, so from February 1st through December 1st, so that was 11 items. I did knits for the first, for um, February 1st. And for March 1st, I knit a test knit for Fox and Folk, and this is called um, Shooting Stars. I knit it of some yarn that I bought at the Maine Fiber Festival. I don't have the tag still. I know the sun is, the light is going in and out here. Um, it's a, here we go. It's a beautiful natural color. Um, it has alpaca and wool. It's super soft, a light DK weight yarn, which is what the pattern called for. 
with these sweet little pattern repeats. It's very, very simple. Um, but in the meantime, I lost the hat I had been wearing and I just needed a hat really badly since it is so cold out. So I've been wearing it. So it looks like I'm going to keep this one. They match my, um, my mittens. It matches my mittens. So I'm going to keep it. And that means I'm down one for the knit 11 items before Christmas. But I'm, what I'm going to do for this month is I'm going to knit the same hat design, the same pattern, shooting in stars. I'm going to make the ribbing longer so that um, it can, so because it is light, if you, if I make the ribbing longer, then I can double, you can double it up. So over your ears or cover double. So this is some yarn that I also got at the main fiber um, festival and it's from a different farm but it is also a combination of alpaca and wool and it is a lightweight so I think it will make a beautiful hat and this will, it will be from my mother so I'll show you that next podcast um let's see so I knit things to also sell in our little sh Etsy shop or uh, locally, we have some things in a little shop, or I save up things for, um, you know, a festival every now and then. I love knitting things for babies and little ones. So this is just a little sweater I finished, except the buttons. I'm going to put on these little, mm -hmm. let me see. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it very well. Anyway, they're little oak buttons that Mike made. Um, I'll show you on Instagram out of a branch and they're really neat because they have a little flower pattern the way the bark goes on them and this sweater I just made up the pattern I used yarn I had on hand this beautiful mustard color is um, Knit Picks Bear that I dyed with onion skins and I just this is definitely I think this is probably my favorite color from definitely from natural dyeing and nearly my, probably my second favorite color of all. So I'm gonna put the buttons on and put it in my shop. And it, I love knitting little, little sweaters. This is a little cardigan. Yep, and that's, that's the cardigan. So I finished that. As I knit, um, as I'm knitting, coming up with um, little designs, I'm keeping notes in my head because I wanna design more. So I'm slowly trying to figure out the process and how to do that. So I'm going to share a little bit more about that right now. A little bit of my process, I've just figured out that I really need to um, <laughs> stop trying to wing it because I've been knitting a lot of things and then having to rip them all out. So what I did for, uh, I, wanted my, I wanted to knit myself a sweater. I want it to be... I love necks like this, a low neckline, uh, more lightweight sweater, so a, a light worsted weight or a DK weight yarn and something I can just throw on. I want to pull over for the spring. I can pull it over um, a t-shirt so that when I'm out working, I can just take it off and so on. And of course, I like simple. So my idea, first I come up with an idea and I just sketch it out. So, sorry about the lighting. Okay, so my idea is to have the deep neck, a couple rows of garter, a um, yarn over, knit two together yarn over to make the holes, the eyelets, and we're going to increase pretty rapidly to create a bit of a, not a ruffle, but a little bit of a gather. And then the same type of a pattern on the cuff and the bottom, the eyelets, and then two rows, well, it's actually four rows of straight knitting to create the garter. And then the rest would be stockinette. Really, really, really simple, comfortable sweater, knit from the top down, and then divide for the sleeves, and then just finish the body. So what I did this time, <laughs> I have to tell you, this is my first ever I am not a conventional knitter and I don't do things right for sure. I knit a swatch. 
And like I told you, I'm really beginner intermediate knitter. So I knit a swatch and I found out that my gauge is four stitches per inch. I'm sorry, it's not, it's five stitches per inch. So that was good. So when I, after I figured out that with the yarn I'm gonna use and the needles I'm going to use, for every inch, it's, I'm gonna have five stitches. So what I did was I took a piece of yarn and I'm sure there are many better ways to do this. Um, and I measured around, this one is actually, I ended up going smaller. I, end, I, um, I could have just measured around the sweater, which is kind of what I did. Take a piece of yarn, and if you have a sweater that you really like the neckline, measure around your neckline, take it off, off, and then measure it on a ruler and figure it out how many inches you want your neckline to be. So I figured out that mine came to 20 inches, so I was going to cast on 100 stitches because 20 times 5 is 100. Um, and then what I did was I measured around my chest area and then I added what is called, I do know this a little bit, positive ease. So like if I measure exactly my chest, and I don't think this is the right yarn that I actually use, and then I wanted to add two inches of positive ease to make it more, you know, more loose, it came out that I wanted 36 inches around, diameter around here. So I multiplied 36 times five, and that came out to 180. So I would need approximately 180 stitches for around my, um, the chest and going down. I did the same for my arm right about here. Um, and it came out to about 14 inches or so. So what I did I had some idea for the pattern. I cast on a hundred stitches and I know I wanted to do increases, keep doing increases until I got how many stitches I would need for each area. I think I originally guessed when I first did it, I thought 72, 72 and 180. 72 for each arm and 180 for the chest. And then when I started knitting the pattern, casting on 100 stitches, uh, you can't see because it shows up backwards, but anyway, um, I increased by knitting front and back, knit one, knit front and back, and then later on knit two, knit front and back, and so on. And it came up to 319 stitches. So I just adjusted the final numbers. I adjusted the final numbers to meet that 319 stitches that I got from all the increases. So like that. So it came out to 70, 70, and 179. All right, so let me show you what I have so far. <laughs> um, is this, this is the, again, it's knit from the top down. I um, did four rows of garter stitch, or yeah, garter stitch. And then I did a knit two together yarn over to make the little eyelet holes. And then I did the increases alternating a knit row and then an increased row. So it all, I did all the increases quite quickly. So they're done and I have my total stitch count, 319 stitches on here. And now I am just straight knitting. So this is the neck. So I have a very generous neckline here. I don't know for sure how it's gonna fit yet. Hopefully there won't be any more ripping out because I've tried this. I was winging it before and did a lot of knitting and ripping out. And so I need to just keep knitting until I get right 
where I want my underarm to go. And then what you, I will be doing is putting the arm stitches, 70 stitches for each arm on waist yarn. And then you, you do cast on some stitches for under your arms, but then you're only knitting the body. And I'll explain more on the next podcast when I get to that point. So this is kind of a formula. I hope it's going to work for a very simple pullover. Um, I'd love to know if you know anybody else has any thoughts. If you want to try along with me, you could do it for your small child, which if you had to rip it out, it wouldn't be as much work um, as if trying it for an adult. And let me just talk about this yarn that I am knitting on. I received an amazing package from a Patreon of mine. Um, she um, lives in Switzerland and has a friend who was coming to the States and she had sent a box over with her, with her to um, send in the mail to me. And in it were four skeins of this beautiful Swiss yarn. It's called Lana Rara, rare Swiss wool. And it's a light, I'm a, I don't know what it's actually called as far as the weight goes. Um, but I, anyway, I got five stitches per inch on size seven needles. I may have to order another skein to get through this sweater. I'm going to wait and see where I'm at. I'm thinking of, I'm only going to make three quarter length sleeves. Um, so it might work. We'll see. If not, I will order one more skein. And she also sent a skein each of, um, a natural, which I don't have here, and this beautiful blue. And I'm keeping this in this bag that she knit. Some of you might have seen it on my Instagram feed. She knit, she sewed, and I just love these colors. So I'm keeping that project in this bag. So anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit of my designing process, which is not probably how most people do it. I don't, there's not a lot of information out there. Um, Dawn Lynn Landix, I will put a link below. She's been sharing bits in her um, Instagram feed and I'm thankful for that. Um, she also designed a new hat, which I'm going to get that pattern because I really want to knit it. It's a cottage hat. So I'll show you that hopefully next podcast too. And, and that package from Switzerland was a book called Knitting Toy Tales. She had a double duplicate copy of it, she said. So she sent it to me. And right away, I wanted to, of course, knit a teddy bear. So I had some yarn in my stash and I knit a little teddy bear, which Emily has already claimed. Boy. <laughs> It's hard to knit anything for anybody else, but that's fine. I love that she likes them, what I knit. Um, and I wanted to share something else from another um, woman friend, that a friend um, from the internet that gotten to know through the blogging and Instagram and um, now the podcast. She had me make two of my little bears from my own pattern, the um, the mountain bear family pattern that I have. It's available on Ravelry and free to all my Patreons. And she ordered two of them, two, a custom order, one with a pink scarf and one with a purple scarf. And she sent in the mail a picture of them and a little bed that she made, which is so sweet. And just a note of thanks, she made it the bed. She's giving them to her niece. So that just, I think I, um, I almost cried because it's for people that 
because she took the time to write a note and send a picture, and that's so thoughtful, and I want to be more like that, <laughs> to take the time to write notes and send them, because it really means so much. Let's see, one another work in progress is my rustic uh, cardigan I'm working on that is my own design in this peace fleece, which is a beautiful color. It's called, um, what's it called? It's a really great name. Here, let me get my last skein of it. I am going to have to order another skein of this. It's gonna, oh, it's gonna be all right. It's this beautiful green with all different specks in it of some various colors. In the light, it is just an amazing, the color is amazing. I'm going to try it on because I want to show you a little bit about it. And again, I will share the design process with this one on another podcast. And all of my patterns will always be free to all um, Patreons. But I'm hoping my next step is to learn how to to um, write my patterns in different sizes. So once I have, you know, my size, which I guess is small, small to medium, to be able to write the pattern with other sizes without having to knit all the different sizes, because that would take forever and cost a lot of money. So this is a, this, the lighting got really bad in here, um, but it is a simple cardigan. It starts with garter stitch and then a really fast increase knit front and back in every stitch in the row and then alternating some really fast increases and until you have the total number of stitches that you want and it, what it does is it creates this kind of a ruffled look. See that? I like it because it's, it's back again. I like it because it's um, like I was saying, it's uh, feminine and comfortable, and I don't really like things too close to my neck. So, and it will have buttons and have long sleeves. So I'm gonna keep working on this, and I really like how it's coming out. And I just lost some stitches here. Okay. So that's this, and again, it's in Peace Fleece. It's a design I am working on. Um, it's, oh, it's very similar to the design I have for the free um, baby doll cardigan that I have on Ravelry. Yes, it's very simple to that, the Belfast Basic Baby Doll cardigan. But I'm trying to up the size to, um, adults and I still need to rewrite the pattern for children. I'm just putting these stitches back on because they just fell off. The last thing I want to show you today is some beautiful yarn. The only thing I think I bought since last time because I bought it from an online longtime friend, Jules. She is Wool Maiden on Instagram and she has her own flock of sheep now and she's getting her wool processed, um, and she also dyes the yarn as well. And this is some beautiful spring colors, multicolored yarn that she dyed herself, and just reminded me so much of spring, and I've just been looking at it and keeping it on my desk. I'm not sure what I'm going to knit with it. I might knit bunnies to put in the shop, just because the colors are so perfect. And that's also a free pattern on um, Ravelry, a very simple little bunny pattern that I have. And I haven't looked at it recently, so I hope it's still okay. I really should take the time to go check it out and make sure that it's still a decent pattern. It probably doesn't have the right website or anything like that on it. But anyway, it is a free little bunny knitting pattern. And I'll show you those next podcast. The last bit of knitting, I forgot that I finished. It is another square for the blanket I want to finish in time for Christmas. It is the um, Nordic Throw by Martin Story. And so this is the next one.
but now I realize I shouldn't do them in brown if unless I get a different brown because I only have this one brown and these fleece for the trunk. So anyway, that's square number two done. And those are really fun, really simple, but I think it will be a beautiful blanket when it's done. All right, so that is it for making. Um, let's see. I think that about does it for today. I am hoping next time I have a little more to show you, a little more to talk about, and um, a little more, a little more to share. One thing I want to do is share other makers that I really enjoy. I think, um, yeah. So I have to take better notes in between podcasts uh, and get a little bit more organized. I'm not a very organized person. You'd think I was, but my brain just gets so scattered and I have a zillion things going on at once. But then again, I don't think I could function if I didn't have a zillion things going on at once. So anyway, please let me know your thoughts. And um, oh, wait a sec, I forgot. I have one more thing I want to do. I want to offer a giveaway. This is a beautiful book. It's called Farm to Needle, Stories of Wool. It was published in 2015 by Anna Dianich. And it has a little, it has a story about different fiber, um, fiber farmers, uh, knitting designers, and different farms. And it has quite a few patterns. Let me just show you. Some of them are simple and some of them are much more complicated. This is the Valley Trail Pullover by Andrea Rangel. Um, these are Aspen, Aspen socks. And... There's a missing cardigan. Can you see that? So it has some beautiful patterns and then it also has some beautiful stories. It is called Farm to Needle Stories of Wool. If you're, you would like um, to, I guess win, I don't like that word win, but if you'd like, if you'd like to receive this, please just leave your, um, just leave a quick little comment below and I will randomly pick somebody to mail it to. I really have enjoyed reading it, um, but I don't think that there are any patterns in it that I will make and I've had it for a couple of years, so I would like to pass it on for somebody else to enjoy. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day and um, thank you so much for watching.